Well, I'm focused on growing my grains here, romaine specifically. Hydroponics allows you to grow all sorts of different vegetables. Looking at these grains, don't think that that limits you on what you can do. I just want to share with you how you can successfully stand up a hydroponics setup in your home for indoor growing year round. It's important that you get a sturdy racking system. As you can see on the shelf, I have six total bins. Each bin holds three gallons of water, 18 gallons of water, and water is fairly heavy. I'll link the racking system that I purchased. I think it's rated for far more weight than I'm putting on it, but that was just to be safe. I don't want any kind of water issues in the garage. Shelf's collapsing, so I erred on the side of caution there. So you can see I just have the two shelves, and then on each shelf I've got six bins, so 12 bins overall. Each bin, as I mentioned, holds three gallons of water, and more importantly holds six romaine heads here. Now depending on the crop that you're doing, you may need to change that up. If you're doing tomato plants or something that has a thicker, wider root system, you may not want to do six, you may want to do a smaller configuration like four per tote. These net cups are three inches wide, but you can see they do have a rim around them so they fit just fine over this three inch hole. So you just want to get a three inch hole saw to create that in the lids so that you can seat these plants on top. On this racking system, you can see clearly that two racks are being used for the actual plants. There's 72 heads of lettuce that I can accommodate, but on the top, I have my electrical setup. So I have this commercial grade power strip coming across and I have timer plugs basically, so I can set either a duration or I can set a timing on them. So I tried and failed at growing indoors for a lot of years. It comes down to really a few key points. Lighting is one of them. You can see I have this spider farmer light that I have over each bin, and that's really important. You want a good source of light to simulate the sunlight. Sunlight is very strong, so if you're growing indoors, you definitely want a good quality light. If you cheap out, you're not gonna get the good results. I have found. So these go on for 10 hours a day and I find that's a good amount of light on a vegetable on the inside. Second thing I want to point out is the need for airflow. As you'll see I have clamped on to the sides of my racks a couple of fairly cheap fans and these go on on an intermittent schedule these are plugged into a BN Link timer. So I have these growing in a garage, so obviously bugs can get in. I have air vents and they can easily come in here, fairly large bugs, and potentially uh, affect these leaves. So the airflow helps prevent the bugs from settling on these leaves and causing any damage. And it also helps the leaves strengthen up. If you don't have any air movement like you would outside, then your plants tend to be very leggy and weak and they'll just kind of flop over. So having the airflow come on intermittently is going to help establish stronger plants. So that's a really important thing to have in your setup. Of course, when we're talking hydroponics, the main thing is to allow oxygenation of the roots. How do you get these good strong roots? You have airflow down at the bottom. So I have these air stones that plug in to an aerator pump and they go on intermittently every five minutes and that helps oxygenate the water to create healthy strong roots for these plants. So I have one air stone per tote and the air stones are plugged into this pump here. I have two of them going. You can get a multi-port plug. So like I mentioned, I actually have 12 total tubs, 12 total air stones. So you can see this model down here has four ports. And then I have a larger model up here that has 
eight ports. So 12 ports overall feeding all these totes. So on the actual substrate that I'm using in the three inch net pots, I'm just opting for your basic pea pebbles that you can get at a big box store. Nothing too fancy. Some people use clay pebbles. Really don't think that you need anything like that. Um, really just something that's gonna help hold the plant up. I will tell you that I have trialed different romaine type lettuces and the one that I find to be the best is this one here, uh, the Paris Island Romaine. This variety does well in the cooler times and also can handle the heat in our summer. It does not go to bolt like some other varieties. So that's when I'm growing 100% in this space. How do I start this romaine head? Well, I have a humidity bin and you really don't need to get too fancy with it. You just need a tray with a top. You could just use Tupperware, quite honestly. You don't need anything fancy. And instead of rock wool, which I find to be very expensive and not necessary, I just use a cotton ball to actually root these. So I'll just take a, a moist cotton ball. I will take a cup of water, dip a toothpick in, that allows a single lettuce seed to stick to that. And then I'll put that on the cotton ball. And that will allow that seed to stick. And within two days, that seed will germinate. So after a week, I'll go ahead and transplant that into one of these net cups with rock around it. It'll be at a depth where it can actually access the water. So what's the maintenance with it once these plants are growing? How often do I need to water these bins to keep up the water level? As you can see with this plant here, the roots are not just right at the surface. They're going down quite a bit. So the roots can access the water down pretty deep. So you can allow your, your bins to actually dry out a, a little bit. You don't have to keep them topped off at all times. I find about a week to two weeks I have to come back and, you know, fill up the bins. In summertime, you might have to fill up more than once a week because it gets so hot in here and they are sweating quite a bit. But what's nice is with this setup is the roots can actually access the water down deep and it's okay if they're air exposed. That's actually almost going to a different method than the deep water culture and that's Kratky where they're getting oxygenation from the air. One thing to be mindful of is that these plants are going to thrive the best in the right pH. So it is a good idea to test your pH in your water with a test strip like this to see what it's at. Uh, most hydroponic plants like this romaine lettuce are gonna want something like at a pH of six. When I first fill a bin and I'm testing a little high on pH is I want to bring it down. So I just get this hydroponic solution and I put a few drops in there and then retest. And if I'm around at a six, then that's at the right pH that I want for this plant. So I periodically will test that out and adjust as necessary. Should you be on the opposite spectrum and you're too low on the pH and you need to bring it up, there are pH plus solutions as well. Beyond monitoring the pH, you're going to want to feed your plants. So this is the general hydroponic solution that I use. This is made by Fox Farm. It is a 326 plant food. Uh, it does really well for romaine. So I put this in just a few drops to each bin every week. Even though there's a high initial cost to putting in a hydroponics setup like this, once you do it, you've got it for many, many years. I will link all the products that I'm using for this setup in the description. Uh, it was a really important thing for me to be able to grow my own lettuce because I use that on a daily basis. And this just was a huge game changer for me because I could not get this quality of produce from even my local organic grocery store like Sprouts. They just didn't have lettuce of this quality. So if you're interested in growing your own food on this type of small scale in your home, hopefully this video helped you out. If you have questions, please let me know. Thanks for watching and happy gardening.